We're looking at a practice exercise from page 101 of the textbook. Now we're dealing with figuring out a limiting reactant in a chemical reaction. A limiting reactant is the reactant we run out of first. There are a couple different ways to determine a limiting reactant. I'm going to use a system similar to what the textbook uses in that we're going to set up something called an ice table, talking about the initial amount of substances, how much they change by, and then the amount that we end with. In order to do these problems, it's very similar to how we were doing stoichiometry, we need a balanced chemical reaction so that we can understand the mole relationships between each of these substances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this chemical equation as two aluminum reacting with three chlorine to make two aluminum chloride. And then I'm going to write in my initial, which is a capital I, my change, which is a capital C, and end. So that's why it's an ice table, I, C, E, end. So I'm going to make a data table where I can keep all of this information straight. And I'm going to put a divider in for each substance. What's very important when you do these ice tables is that you can only put mole information into them. In this case, that's fine because they give us everything in moles, but if we ever have gram information, we would need to change the grams into moles. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in the information that we know. We know that we are starting with 1.5 moles of aluminum. We know that we are starting with 3 moles of chlorine. Typically, we start with zero moles of the products because that is what we are trying to make in this chemical reaction. The change row tells us how the amounts of the substances are going to change as this chemical reaction takes place. And the change row comes from the coefficients. So I know that every time I run this chemical reaction, the amount of aluminum I have is going to decrease by a factor of two. I know that the amount of chlorine I have is going to decrease by a factor of 3, and the amount of product I have is going to increase by a factor of 2. So the reason for the negative signs with the reactants, with the aluminum and the chlorine, is because the amounts of those are decreasing. There are going to be less reactants at the end of this reaction. The reason for the positive sign on the product, the aluminum chloride, is because I'm going to increase the amount of product. So decrease the reactants, increase the products. If you want to think about it, there's kind of a big dividing line between these two sides. I decrease the amount of reactants, I increase the amount of products. Something else that is helpful to think about. The way your textbook does it, it just says it decreases by 2 moles, decreases by 3 moles, or increases by 2 moles. I like to put an x in, and then I can do this algebraically. Now we talked about a limiting reactant means the reactant that I run out of first. If I run out of the reactant, that means there is none left at the end of the reaction. So what I like to do is I like to theoretically determine what would happen if something was the limiting reactant. So if aluminum was limiting, when I take the 1.50 moles that I start with and I subtract the 2x for the coefficient, I would be left with zero because that's what it means to be a limiting reactant. Whatever I start with, subtracting whatever the change is, I would end with zero. For that to be true, x would have to be equal to 0 0.75 moles. Let's do the same thing for the chlorine. If chlorine was limiting, then 3.00 minus 3x equals zero. So the amount I start with minus the change is going to give me zero because that's what it would mean to be a limiting reactant is that I have zero left at the end. If I do that math, that would mean that x is equal to one mole. Now both of these things can't be true. x cannot be equal to two different values. So which one is it? Is x equal to 0.75 mole or is x equal to one mole? If x was equal to one mole, so I'm going to think about this situation first. If x was equal to one mole, that makes sense and that I would run out of chlorine because I start with three moles, 
3 times 1 is 3, so 3 minus 3 would give me 0. I'd run out of it. What about the aluminum? If x was equal to 1, I would take my 1.5, I would subtract it from 2. Well, 1.5 minus 2 would be negative 0.5. I can't have a negative amount of a substance that's not possible. The lowest amount I can have is 0. So I cannot possibly decrease by a factor of one mole. If I decrease by that much, again, I'd end up with a negative number here, which is not possible. So that tells me that the smaller number for x must be true. And then again, I can solve this. So I know that x is 0.75, which means that my end is my 1.50 ohmoles minus 2 times 0 0.75, and that means I would end with 0 which again makes sense because this was the situation if aluminum was the limiting reactant. And if aluminum is the limiting reactant, I end with zero. Well, what happens for chlorine? I have to use the same value of x for everything. Again, I decided that the 0.75, the smaller number, was true. So this would look like 3.00 minus 3 times 0.75. And if you do that math, you're going to see that I actually have 0.75 moles left at the end, and that makes sense. Chlorine is my excess reactant, meaning that there's some left at the end. Now for the products. I'm gonna start with zero. I'm gonna add two times 0.75. Remember that I'm adding because this is a product and products are formed when the chemical reaction happens. And if I do that math, I'll end with 1.50. Again, this answer should be reasonable. If you look at the coefficients on the aluminum and the aluminum chloride, it makes sense since they have the same coefficient that since I consume all of the aluminum, and that's 1.5 moles, I should produce exactly the same amount of aluminum chloride because they have the same coefficients in the balanced reaction. You can do all of this by doing stoichiometry, but I think the chart makes a little bit more clear what exactly is going on. It also allows us to answer all of these questions that are posed. So the first question asks us, which is the limiting reactant? Remember, the limiting reactant is what we ran out of. And we ran out of aluminum. I can tell that we ran out of aluminum because there was none left at the end. So that means that aluminum is our limiting. And chlorine is our excess reactant. The next question asks us how many moles of aluminum chloride are formed? Well, we've already answered that question. We figured out at the end how much of the product we have, and at the end we have 1.50 moles. And the last question is how many moles of the excess reactant remain at the end of the reaction? So important things here, end and excess. So since they're asking us about the excess, they're asking us about the chlorine. Since they're asking us about the end, we want to figure out how much chlorine we have left at the end. And again, we see from our math that we have 0 0.75 moles of chlorine left at the end. So these ice tables are a nice way to organize your thoughts and a way for you to get the answers to all of the questions all in one contained location. Remember that when you do these ice tables, you have to do it in moles because that change row deals with the coefficients and the coefficients are always mole ratios. So we always have to have moles in these ice tables.